Moore, and I'm here on behalf of the Davidson Institute of Science Education. As you're all aware of, humanity is on its way to Mars, but in order to do that, astronauts need to train in an analog simulations in order to get prepared. Today, the next presentations will be about Project D-Mars. It's an analog space simulation center that's going to be established near the city of Mitzperamon. D-Mars is sponsored by the Israeli Space Agency and by ICA Israel and is in collaboration with the Dead Sea and Arava Science Center. Uh, the next talk will describe the analog facility and the space simulation that will be started two weeks from now near Mitzperamon. But in my talk, I will focus on two things. First, I want to describe what is a space analog and give some examples from analogs around the world and from my personal experience. And second, I will talk about why does Israel need analogs and why to establish it near Mitzperamon. So let's start. What is a space analog? A space analog is any situation in which some condition similar to that one that found on an extraterrestrial environment. So for example, Mahtesh Ramon is analogous to Mars in its aridity and geology. Doing a simulation underwater, doing a simulation underwater is analogous to doing an EVA in a space environment or uh, living in crowded conditions is analog to, is a psychological analog to future long duration missions. Space agencies have their own analogs, uh, facilities and simulations. For example, we have their uh, NEMO, which is an underground simulation, underwater, sorry, underwater simulation uh, outside of uh, Florida's bay. It is, uh, in or it is aimed at um, training astronauts and scientists for future missions. Desert Rats at the, at the center is an annual analog that is conducted in Arizona desert in order to test new developments for space sector. ESA Caves is a, tr is a training course specifically for astronauts to train for long duration uh, space operations. Commercial sector also do analog si simulations. They do analogs specifically to test uh, new developments for the space industry. I'll give two examples. Project Moonwalk. Project Moonwalk is a, is a consortium of seven different companies from the EU that uh, test specifically technology that's relevant for robot and humanity and human cooperation. The Austrian Space Forum is another organization in Europe that uh, serves as a communicator for space industries and each year they simulate uh, an analog simulation in another place, another location in the world. In two weeks from now, our simulation is in collaboration with the Austrian Space Forum and you will hear about it in the next lectures. Academia and educational organizations also conduct analog simulations. For example, High Seas in Hawaii, which is a NASA-sponsored analog simulation run by the Hawaii University. She Habitat is a self-deployable habitat, and it was designed in collaboration with the International Space University. MDRS is one of the two habitats that are owned by the Mars Society, and it is mostly used for public outreach and for academic research. I myself was in MDRS last year, last January, as part of an international team, uh, and our goal was to, to test 3D printing in situ resources utilization technologies for future habitat on Mars. But actually, the best outcome of my mission was the impact that it created in Israel, inspiring the youth here in Israel to pursue science education. Another hidden goal that I had is to learn how to run these simulations because back then, a year ago, I already had the idea of constructing and establishing uh, an analog facility here in Israel, first one in the Middle East. So why does Israel need analogs? Well, we are the startup nation and many Israeli companies have products that can be applicable for space exploration. It holds a great potential for, uh, for Israel to become a leader of these technologies. And a space analog is a necessity in order to test this product. Education 
as you all aware, as you all aware of, or, uh, when you were kids, you all dreamed about becoming an astronaut. So a space simulation is a great method to 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 use to, to learn kids about science and about the technology, and and in the end, the simulation itself is what that inspired them to continue on in this in this uh, endeavor. Another use of space simulation is for space tourism. Space tourism, for example, doing a space simulation in Ramon Crater is another mean to uh, impact the public and outreach uh, the Israeli public in order for them to support space exploration. It, also, uh, very, it is also good as a mean for uh, opening new employment opportunities in the Negev. And if you want to dream big, we are uh, envisioning that in a, in a decade, space uh, will become more accessible. So commercial flight will be something that is more casual. We are uh, hoping to become a hub for space analogs to train those astronauts in Israel for, uh, for commercial flights. One example that is already running, and some here in the crowd are from this program, is the, is the Israeli Youth Astronaut Academy that is run in the Davidson Institute of Science Education and sponsored by the Israel Space Agency. It is a two years course for high school kids that train in a program that is inspired by the Real Astronauts Program of NASA. During their two years, they are uh, using space simulations and we use it as a method for them uh, to want to learn about science and technological tools that will help them in the simulations. The, um, the, last, uh, the last thing they will do, the first class is finishing this April, and they're going to live in D Mars, in our uh, habitat, in the Negev Desert for three days and conduct research in the surrounding environment. And you're asking why Mitzpah Ramon, why, why not Eilat, for example? So Mitzpah Ramon is a peripheral city that uh, try, tries to brand herself as the city of space. It has a geosciences visitor center, uh, as you probably know, and it has an exhibition sorry, uh, about Ilan Ramon, uh, Ilan Ramon's mission. When there's a meteorite shower, they darken the light streets and conduct events of stargazing. And the biggest, uh, the biggest observatory in Israel is located near Mitzpermon, and, and it is run by Tel Aviv University. So we, we wish to be to uh, combine ourselves with this branding. And why choosing Mechtesh Ramon? Here is a pop quiz for you. Odette, please don't answer. Um, I'm asking you if you can recognize, distinguish between the pictures here that are from Mars and from its analog, Mechtesh Ramon. So it's quite hard, I know. I will help you with that. <laughs> I knew that. So, Mechtesh Ramon, Mars, Mechtesh Ramon. Mars, Mahtesh Ramon, Mars, Mahtesh Ramon, and Mars. And I hope it supports my argument, and you can agree with me now, that at least morphologically, Mahtesh Ramon is a great analog for Mars, and maybe uh, also in its geology and biology that we hope to find on Mars. Um, but it, support, it supports uh, what I'm saying, that if you're looking for a great analog, we have it. Just go to Mahtesh Ramon. To summarize, we here plan to establish a space simulation center near Mahtesh Ramon in order to conduct research, education, and tourism, and to promote Israel as a leader of space exploration technologies. I thank you very much, and with that, I will pass to the next speaker.